Very well. So, as we chug along in our geometry, we know that there is at least one point in the set. In fact, the existence axiom says that there's more than one point in our geometry. And the incidence axiom says between any two points is a line. And the ruler postulate says that this line is, in fact, a number line. There's a bijection between the set of points on this line and the set of real numbers. But if we stop there, then we can literally stop with one line and say that's it for our geometry. Uh, our author says, nope, axiom 4 is about plane separation. Uh, for every line L, the points that do not lie on L form two disjoint non-empty sets H1 and H2 called half planes bounded by L such that each of H1 and H2 is convex, and if P is in H1 and Q is in H2, then segment PQ intersects L. What does that mean? Well, um, it means, what does convex mean? Well, convex means that if uh, P1 and P2 are in H1 or H2, then all of segment P1, P2 is in H1 or H2. So when we say that H1 is convex, we mean you give me two points in the half plane, the entire segment is in the half plane. If any part of the segment breaks out of H1, then H1 is not convex. So we imagine that there is some line L, uh, and that line L is the boundary for two disjoint non-empty sets, H1, and H2. These are disjoint, non-empty sets called half planes. This set is convex, this set is convex, and if P is up here and Q is down there, no matter where Q is down here, no matter where P is up here, the segment between them must intersect line L. That's what the plane separation postulate says. So with the plane separation postulate, now we have the entire plane. We don't just have a line. We have the entire plane. Um, a little bit of vocabulary. We would say that points P and R are on the same side of L. We would say that the points Q and P are on opposite sides of L. Uh, we would also talk about angles. We would say, because it, we can talk about angles now, the ang an angle is the union of two non-opposite rays that share an endpoint. And that sort of makes sense. Uh, you got a ray, Here's a ray, maybe it's ray AB. Uh, any other ray that isn't the opposite ray, uh, so we don't want collinearity here, any other ray AC forms an angle. And the angle is the union of the two black rays. Uh, we say non-opposite because uh, we don't allow what your high school instructor may have allowed no straight angles. There are no 180 degree angles. So, uh, so we don't normally talk about angles. We talk about the space inside the angle. So uh, we should probably talk about the interior of an angle. What do we mean by the interior of angle CAB? How do we describe this area out here. Well, we would say that it's the union of 
the half plane bounded by line AB containing C and the half plane bounded by a C containing B. So here's line AB. There's the what we call the C side of line AB and the not C side of line AB. So the half plane containing C, that's this. Then you have the half plane bounded by line AC. Here's line AC. There's the B side, the side of line AC where B is, and the non-B side. Uh, this is the B side. So the interior, I'm sorry, it's not a union. I'm so sorry. It's not a union. It's the intersection. It's the intersection of those two half planes because the interior of angle CAB is the stuff that gets colored both ways. So you should know how to talk about that. That's fairly important. Um, I've got a couple of theorems that I'm going to run through uh, in the next video uh, that are somewhat important and play right off of these ideas.